Yurter, Y-R-R, or is it pronounced Yur? Either way, the roller assembly for laser. And we're going to assemble this, and I'm going to show it step by step, coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What I'm going to do in this video here is a step-by-step -step assembly of the Ortur YRR roller assembly for use it on my Ortur laser. Or I could use it on my Atom stack, either one. Uh, it does require a lot of assembly, and there are a lot of little parts and pieces, and I'm going to take this through step-by-step. -step. If you are experienced with putting things like this together, this will probably just completely bore you. But if you're not sure about it, or if you're not particularly mechanically inclined, um, I'm going to go through this step-by-step. -step. It does come with an destructions, instructions and they're not really that clear so for me it's going to be kind of a simple thing but for a lot of people it may not be so therefore i'm going to take this through step by step start by unboxing it sorting out all the parts pointing out what they are then we'll put this thing together okay first you'll see it does come with instructions and they look like this here so it's not a whole lot of written steps it just kind of shows you what goes where We'll get this unpackaged here, show you what's in the box. So we have some bearings and sprockets. So we have some more bearings. We have some belts. And brackets. The cable you use to connect to the stepper motor. Some hardware. In plates. It's not particularly easy to get out of this foam. Stepper motor. Rollers. And extrusions. So I'll get all this here unbagged and then we'll come back to this. These acrylic pieces have a paper coating on them or a paper film on them to protect them and getting that off is going to take you probably longer than it will take to actually put this thing together okay got all the parts and pieces laid out here and got that paper film off of these and that was not an easy task so what we have here I'm going to set this off to the side this is the uh, y-axis cable that will plug into the stepper motor which then uh, plugs into your laser that's what operates the roller on the y-axis. So we start off here looking at the directions. They do give you a couple of alien wrenches and a little stamped steel wrench. I'm going to opt to use a real wrench. And I have these drivers here for the take the place of the Allen's there because I like these. And they're a lot easier to use. So we'll start off, we've got a couple of these pieces here, and the one with the larger circle in it, right here, is where the stepper motor mounts. And looking at how it is set up here, you'll want this to face the outside, like so. And one of the tools you're going to need is a Phillips screwdriver, and I don't have one here. A little shop tip, one thing that'll be to your advantage when you're working with these little Phillips screws is if your screwdriver is magnetic and if it's not, you can get these little deals here where you just put your screwdriver in here on the side where it says magnetize and give it a few strokes through. It also has one at the top to demagnetize it if you don't want to leave it that way. Then you should be able to pick the screws up just like that. Okay, so looking at the picture, it sits like this. This piece sets this way. Stepper motor will go in from that side. And you'll want the plug facing out.
Don't tighten your screws up yet. You want to make sure you get all of them started before you snug them down. Okay, the next step here is only slightly confusing. You have these 5M&M five five &M by 20M&M, &M, that's millimeters, bolts. You'll have these bearings. This is where it gets a little bit tricky here. You see there's a flange on one side of the bearing. The flange side goes against the head of the screw. You have another one which then sets just the opposite with the flange away from the screw. You'll then have what they call a nylock nut. This is a nut that has a nylon insert in it. That will then go onto the screw. And you'll need to tighten that up on there. This will be 8 millimeter on that end. Boy, this is, almost should have a socket for this. See if we can't fumble through this. So it is going to be somewhat stiff. That's the whole point of the nylock nut is it holds it well. So when you're tightened up, you still need to be able to rotate the bearing here. Don't get it so tight you can't rotate that. I can bring this up just a little bit more. Make sure that rotates. So then next you'll have what they call a spacer, which is actually a washer. So, that goes over that nut, and incidentally, the nut, the flat side goes against your bearings here. And the castled side goes towards what's going to be your washer. Then you have your plate here with the stepper part facing out. And one of these goes into the slot from the side where the stepper is sticking out. On the back side of that you'll have a nut. Okay, and then the you see where I've got the first one mounted there. Second one will go into this hole right here according to the illustration. Put a nut on the back of that. And I probably got my hands right in the way, but it's screwing a nut on. So there's the first step. Now our next step is for the extrusion. That's this right here. See there's two holes right here next to the stepper motor. This goes there, like so. With these 5 millimeter by 12 millimeter screws. And on the opposite end, you have this here. You want it with the or tour facing out. And that's step two. The next are the rollers and the roller holders. They're two different kinds. This shape here is what they call the fixed roller holder. This one here is for the removable roller holder. I like that, roller holder. So we'll start out, you see one end is longer than the other on the roller. This end you'll need one of these little bearings. And the flange will face the roller like so. Then you'll have your fixed roller holder. The same thing on the other end, the flange will face the roller. And it assembles like so. Hope you can see that. 
Okay, on the end of this then you'll want to have, and I'm going to take this off because it'll just fall off if I don't. There's two different sprockets. There's a 25 tooth and then uh, something less. Anyway, you don't want the small one here. You want the, the, the large one. And it slides onto the shaft and I don't see that it's got a flat on it anywhere. It just slides on there. And for now, I'm just going to snug it down a little bit so, so that it'll hold my bracket on there. I'm not going to tighten it down because we want to get things kind of lined up. So we got to do the same thing now with the other one using the uh, other type of bracket. Thought I had all that paper off of there. Again, I'm just going to snug it up a little bit to hold it on there. Now these guys get to mount on the roller. So starting with the removable roller holder. You have 5 millimeter by 12 millimeter screws. That's these here, the shorter ones of the two. The bracket, by the way, as I just noticed here as I was putting this together, goes on the inside of the plate, not on the outside. And once you get all your bolts started in there, you can snug this one up. Now you'll be doing the same thing with the uh, with the adjustable roller holder. And for this, I'm just going to start the screws in here ahead of time so that you can move it from slot to slot. And I guess I'll just pick a set of slots here at random. Yeah, make sure you get. Make sure you got your roller sprocket on the same end as the other sprocket. I'm just going to pick a set at random here of holes. And they should be in line. There we go. These rollers should rotate freely and this one doesn't really. I need to see why that is. Maybe I have my sprocket back there too far. There we go. Okay, now next we've got the timing sprocket. This goes the opposite way of what these here do according to the picture. The larger side will go out and there is a flat side on the sprocket here. So one thing you want to do is get all your teeth in line. At this point you can set your sprockets up and you can eyeball this just by looking down at it to make sure they're all lined up. And you can snug up your sprockets. And now comes the timing belt. That's this guy here. You'll notice it has teeth on it. The teeth will mesh in with what you see on these little sprockets. Okay, so putting your timing belt on goes around the back sprocket here. You'll see I have the separate motor sprocket down here. The, the bottom one down here is your adjustment for the belt tension. It'll go underneath that. This top one comes down and goes underneath the stationary sprocket. It's back up around. Around your timing belt. And you use this one down here to set your belt tension. It's 
So how much tension do you want? You want to be able to rotate these easily. You want just a little bit of give in it, like this. That is how the belt routes. Okay, now on the same end as the stepper motor and the pulleys, you'll have what they are calling is a roller baffle. What this does is it keeps your project from rolling off the end or going too far. This you'll have a couple of these uh, three millimeter by six millimeter screws. And you look down here and there'll be some holes in the side. And depending on where you have your roller set, I'm just going to put this in at a random spot here. So when you're done, it'll look like this. And the last item is a lifting plate. That's this guy here. And you will have some M5 by 20 millimeter screws left. That is these guys here have a couple of roller bearings. Pass this through the bearing here. And they show a lock washer on the bearing side. That goes through your plate. Be a nut on the back. Get those snugged up and you should be able to rotate these freely, which they do. Lastly, you'll have this little spacer block. You'll have some thumb screws. Spacer block, flip this around here, the spacer block goes on the inside. And there are holes here in the side. Of course, now this is something, you won't have this on there if you're just engraving something that is completely cylindrical. But if you have like, uh, as they show on their old instruction sheet, a goblet that has a stem on it or something that is tapered, you would use this to adjust up and down so that you would have a perfectly horizontal surface here. That's the purpose of this. And that's easily removable and it's adjustable up and down. They give you some little feet here to put on the bottom to wrap over the edges here. I don't know how long they'll stay, but they look nice. Okay, and the last thing here is the cable. It's going to attach to your y-axis. You look at the ends, they're obviously different. This end here, the wider end, will go, I should say the female end, or it, actually it's a male. You can see the pin sticking out in there. Hopefully you can see that. That end will plug into your laser. This end here, Plugs into the side of the stepper motor. You notice it is keyed on one side. Don't try to plug this in backwards or you'll bend those pins. And if you bend those pins, you'll have a dickens of a time trying to get them straightened out. When you're done, look like this. That's how it sets on your laser. Actually, it'll be sitting like this on mine. So my axis connection is on that side. That's all there is to it. So there's the assembly of this Ortur YRR roller attachment, accessory, whatever you want to call it for your laser. I've got it all set up here and of course this is assembly only. The setup will be with my laser will be part of a different video and I'm ready to do a little bit of uh, calibration and testing the roller but first I need to drink what's in this can. I don't want to uh, engrave on that when there's still beer inside that would be a waste so if you get anything out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel otherwise i'm roger in the shop or tur yrr rotary attachment for your laser thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one